Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about White Knight Syndrome, the rescuer roles mindset. What it is, why it's dangerous, and some of the things you can do to get out of this mindset. So I have a question. Are you always the one who swoops in to try to save the day in all of your relationships? Do you find yourself constantly trying to fix other people's problems that aren't yours? If so, you're suffering from white knight syndrome or this idea of this rescuer role mindset. I've done other videos on the rescuer role and how it fits into the, dra the drama triangle. That'll be linked to this video, so check that out. But in this video, we're gonna explore this specific syndrome, why it's harmful, and most importantly, how you must break free from it. Because again, I always say, people pleasers only generate takers. So white knight syndrome simply means is this pattern of behaviors where individuals constantly try to rescue or fix other people always, always at the expense of their own well-being. Some of the signs of this, my friends, are you always seem to be attracted, maybe even your romantic relationships, you always seem to be attracted to maybe the toxic women, the women who constantly have problems, the women who are full of drama. You have this idea that if I just go in I can fix her, I can make her better when these problems aren't yours. I see this a lot when I'm helping guys in their relationship specific to maybe their marriage or going through a divorce, they're getting back out there and they're dating and they notice the same patterns that they're attracted to the same type of woman they were married to or they're attracted to the same type of woman they had past relationships with and oftentimes they realize that they're attracted to the toxic type of woman or this baby drama mama, baby mama drama women, these women who constantly play this victim role and they try to swoop in and they try to save the day, they try to rescue her and it's always at your own expense. It can be your own personal expense, whether it's money-wise, it can be your time, your provisioning, it's always at your own expense. But you also have this feeling that you're responsible to some degree for this other person's happiness, when in reality, they should be responsible for their own happiness and you should be responsible for yours. Nothing you do or don't do should do have anything to do with their happiness. But yet you have this idea where if you don't do these things, if you don't swoop in, if you don't try to fix their problems, they're not going to be happy and you put that burden on you. Oftentimes the white knight, the rescuer role mindset is they, they just have no ability to say no to any request for help. Whether that request for help is implied or indirect, you offer your help in the hopes, again, of trying to rescue them from generally their own bad mistakes, their own bad decisions that they made in your life. So hopefully now you can see if any of these things apply to you, hopefully your spidey senses are picking up and like, fuck, yeah, I do all this stuff. And it oftentimes what happens is and why this is so harmful for you specifically is number one, it creates codependent relationships. The relationship itself is only predicated upon the things that you're doing to try to rescue, save, help, or enable this person's bad decision-making in the past that's now catching up to them. And it's not a equal or even exchange of value. You're the giver, they're the taker in this. And what happens is you start feeling burnt out and you also start feeling resentment because you're always giving, giving, giving. Again, whether they've even asked or not, you're still giving and yet you feel resentment because maybe you've asked them for something or 
you needed help with something and they were unable or unwilling to do it. So you're creating this resentment based on you coming into a situation that you didn't create trying to rescue them. It also enables destructive behavior in others because if they know you're always going to be there, you're always going to come in and save the day. They can always turn to you to fix their boo-boos. They can always turn to you to help steer them in the right direction. It gives them no incentive to actually correct the bad behavior that they continuously find themselves doing. So you're actually enabling their very, their same bad decision-making that they've had all their life. Again, in the video like below, take a look at that because it talks a lot about the drama triangle and how you need to shift your role out of the rescuer role into more of a coaching, more of a mentorship role. And also the biggest thing, probably why it's the most harmful for you, it prevents your own personal growth and the personal growth of that other person that you're trying to help. Because again, if you're always fixing their mistakes, they can't grow. They can't get through this mistake on their own. They can't try to figure it out, which will lead to growth. And because you're giving so much of your time, energy, and resources, you can't personally grow. Make sense? Usually the main causes of this white knight syndrome is this idea of your very low self-esteem, very low self-worth of yourself. And so you try to fill that hole, you try to fill that, that space inside of you with maybe the gratitude of others for helping them, but it's a sign of very low self-esteem in you. By you going in and rescuing them or going in with this idea that they can't do it on their own, I must help them. It actually pulls their power away because everybody is really whole and complete on their own. They might need a little coaching. They might need a, a friend, but not a doer. And by you going in and just fixing their mistakes only to make you feel better actually detracts for them. And in a way, it's kind of a shitty behavior to think about it like that. It's a very shitty way. It's, it's not a true friendship. It's not a true relationship that you're cultivating. You come in with the, this idea that this person is below me. I must come and fix them in order to help them. You actually take on this judge role because you're thinking subconsciously that they can't do it on their own. When in reality, they may have never been able to do it on their own because there's been people in their life like you who's always just fixed their problems. You have this, this need for control and validation. Now, to be fair, guys, I probably still have to less a degree, but at definitely more in my past, a rescue role mindset. Most of my companies were around helping other people. A lot of my past relationships, I had this thought that they can't do it on their own. They need me. I have to be the one to fix this. They can't do it on their own. So I've had this mindset for years. Over the last, say, 10 years, I've, I've cultivated a different type of role. This is why I coach. This is why I'm more of a mentor where I know the person can do it themselves. They might just need a little direction or they might need a little support, but it's definitely, it's filling a need for validation in you. This is why typically this white knight or this rescue world mindset, this is why they have the mindset. It could also be fear of abandonment because you also have this thought like, if I do all of these things for this person, then they owe me. They can't abandon me. I've done all of these things. So you put up this goodwill that you think you're doing for this person. And so they never leave me. They need me. I'm their crutch. I'm their support system. So a lot of it stems from fear. It also stems from that fear again, that maybe they are powerful. Maybe they're just a little weak right now, but they still do have power. They just need to maybe get some reassurance that they can do it on their own. And because you're taking that role, that responsibility, and you're taking that power away from them, it's actually making you feel 
that they can't abandon me because I have this thing. I, I control them. I, I'm here for them. I'm always fixing their stuff. How do you overcome this? If you are have any of these traits and if you have been this type of person in the past, if you're this type of person now, and you're not feeling really fulfilled, you're always feeling drained, you're always feeling like, oh my God, I gotta help this person, and then this person needs me. Recognize the pattern. Hopefully this video just lets you say, okay, there's a pattern of behavior that I have that I'm always the one trying to save other people. And learn to sell healthy boundaries. I always say, learn the power of no. No is a complete sentence. You don't have to explain your no. You don't have to give excuses for your no. If you, if a friend of yours needs your help and you're unable to help them because you have other commitments, other engagements, no, that's it. No. If a girl that you're dating um, needs you to maybe pay a bill out of the blue, she can't afford something and you're not yet that there in your relationship or you have this idea that I can't give her money. I, I'm, I'm actually struggling myself. No. Set healthy boundaries in these relationships so that both parties kind of know where your line is. Again, if you can help somebody and you're willing to help somebody, you have the ability to help somebody, well, then that's just being a good friend. But don't do it out of this need to rescue them. Don't do it out of this need to get your validation for helping them. Also, understand that difference between helping and enabling. Helping somebody is helping a friend move or maybe talking to that friend who is struggling right now in a situation. They might just need you to help, to listen, to maybe guide them into... Maybe maybe you've been in this situation before and you can give them some guidance. It's not taking on their burden, putting it on you and then fixing it. So that's the difference between helping and enabling. Enabling somebody doesn't teach them anything. You're just doing it for them and you're actually making it worse for them because it stuns their personal growth. With that, my name is Jared Schumacher. This is Magnetic Men's Club. If you found videos like this helpful, consider subscribing to the channel, leave a comment, hit that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped, and consider subscribing to our brand new Magnetic Men Mentorship Program. The link is down below. It explains everything. You will get into a group of men who are on the same path and purpose, the same vision for their life, who are just trying to level it up, consider taking a look at that group. It's $30 a month for the basic package, $97 a month for full access. If you are looking for specific one-on-one -on -one coaching with me in the realm of relationships, power dynamics, social dynamics, frame control, click the link below, link brings you to my website, explains the entire program to you, you can apply for that program. And if you get accepted, you work one-on-one -on -one with me and you get access to this app so that you continue on with your education. With that, my name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Lens Club. Have an amazing day and we'll talk soon.